men, women, all ages, jamming the sidewalks in New York City, in Manhattan, to scream, we love Trump. I don't think this is what Team Biden was hoping for. Yesterday, I want to show you the scene in Harlem as Donald Trump, on a break from his criminal trial, visited an infamous bodega. But look at the crowd. Look at the faces of the children greeting the presidential candidate and former president. I love you, Trump! I love you, Trump! I love you, Trump! We love 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 Trump! Did I mention that was Harlem in front of a Mexican restaurant? on the sidewalk next to a Spanish bodega. We love Trump, we love Trump. In fact, we're gonna show you this scene from several different angles. Understand what's going on here. The criminal jury, the, the, uh, uh, the, the criminal trial that Donald Trump is subjected to in lower Manhattan has forced him to be there every single day for jury selection. He can't even leave to go to his son's high school graduation. He can't go and campaign. So what's he going to do? He's running for president. Well, you know, while I'm here, let's go campaign while we're here in New York. New York, Mr. President, it's a blue state. They're never going to, well, I don't care. I'm running for president. I want to campaign. And oh, by the way, it's New York. So, you know, maybe there'll be some TV cameras to catch it and it'll get broadcast in places where maybe I do have a better shot than I have in New York. And of course, that was the strategy and it made a lot of sense. But suddenly you see the scene on the streets of New York. And it's almost like he has a chance to win there. Uh, more on that speculation in just a sec. But here he is talking to the media as he visits this, as I mentioned, infamous bodega, where the owner of the store was assaulted and robbed in the middle of the night. He used his Second Amendment rights to protect himself, if you remember. And the district attorney of Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, the same man who's going after Trump, decided to try to prosecute the owner of the bodega. So Trump went to visit him because they both have something in common. They're both dealing with the twisted injustice of the district attorney of Manhattan. This is a very exciting time for me because the bodegas, the association invited me and uh, I respect them and they respect me. They want law and order. They have a lot of crime, tremendous crime where their stores are being robbed. And as you know, we're going to give New York a very good shot for the presidency. We think we should be able to do it. A lot of things have changed. Lee Zelda did a beautiful job. He ran, he lost by a little bit. And uh, New York's a lot different. And we'll work with the mayor, and we'll work with the governor, and we'll bring in a lot of federal money, but we have to straighten out New York, and that includes crime. And these guys have great people, great friends, but they have tremendous crime. So we're going to straighten it out. I assure you they're not chanting four more years of Biden. They want four more years of Trump. And you heard him mention Lee Zeldin and New York being in play. Yeah, former Congressman Lee Zeldin actually tweeted out this video that you're about to see next and said, if Trump continues to campaign in New York during breaks in his criminal trial, he's putting New York in play. New York City is his home. It's his element. He knows this place. And he hasn't spent a lot of time there campaigning because everybody wrote it off. Well, should they write it off? I mean, really, considering how things are in New York right now? I heard 78% think it's a rigged deal. And it is a rigged deal. It's a rigged trial. Our courts, everything is screwed up in New York. And the whole world is watching. This judge is so conflicted. You understand that. You'll take a look at that. There's never been a judge so conflicted as this. It's ridiculous. And also, there's no crime. You know where the crime is? In the bodegas, where they come and rob them every week. Or more than that. More than that. This was a stroke of genius, an absolute political stroke of genius. Here's the district attorney spending millions of dollars trying to come after me for a crime that he made up and invented that legal scholars and analysts on the left and the right are looking at this with the most suspicious, jaundiced eyes. And meanwhile, it's not like the district attorney in Manhattan doesn't have other things that he could be doing here. I'm going to go visit the areas where there really is crime, where he's not showing up. And here we are with these small business owners, the bodega owners, and everyone in New York looks around and says, he's right. He's right. I mean, I like him, but he's right. 
more scenes here that are absolutely phenomenal. Watch how the crowd. So, and again, it's like a rally broke out. When you see the crowd outside the store when they found out Trump was there, it's a phenomenon in Manhattan. All right, so you hear the crowd. Oh, wait, there's more of the crowd drag because the crowd is drowning out the TV camera microphones. All right. Oh, there's our buddies Birch Gold. Love that. Except don't text Trump. Ch- text Larry. Text Larry to 989898. Text Larry. Right, a little extra for Birch Gold Group. All right. Uh, let's move in because I want to show you the other angle of this scene right here. You just saw him talk into the pool of cameras and everyone's reaching over with their microphones and everything. Uh, people in the crowd had their own cell phones, their own TV studios right there in their hands. And they captured the exact same scene from a different angle so you can see exactly what this phenomenon looked like. Take a look. Look at that. Look at that. Black faces, brown faces, Asian faces, men, women, all ages jamming the sidewalks in New York City, in Manhattan, to scream, we love Trump. I don't think this is what Team Biden was hoping for when they salivated and and rubbed their hands together like Mr. Burns at the idea of a criminal trial of Donald Trump. He's just a felon. Look at him. Well, you know, yeah, look at him. And as he made his way back into his motorcade, he made a deliberate stop to thank the men and women of the NYPD, the men and women who are getting so abused by the leadership there and who are taken for granted and who are thrown under the bus for political purposes, he stopped and said hello to the men in blue. You see, cops in New York have known Trump for 30 years. They know better. They know who he is. And they're not believing what they're being told by the Democrats who run that city now. Take a look at what it looked like when the motorcade left and what the crowd on the street, how they reacted. Those are kids screaming with excitement in Manhattan, in Harlem. Can I say it again? (laughs) In Harlem. Down by the courthouse, there was uh, an amazing GMC truck, the Trump truck, parading in front of all of the TV cameras and satellite trucks. You remember during the O.J. Simpson trial, they had Camp O.J.? Well, this is Camp Donald now down in lower manhattan because you know they needed more reasons to screw up traffic in lower manhattan but look at that truck it is a party atmosphere in new york city right now during this trial and like i said not exactly the scene that Joe Biden wanted. I don't know if they can survive a couple of weeks of this. If every single day he finds another area in New York within a driving distance or circumference of the courtroom to go and spend his breaks. A uh, a New York influencer on TikTok or Instagram decided to comment on this. And I think that he hits to the bone of the truth here about what's actually happening in Harlem right now and why Donald Trump was greeted that way. 
Have you heard? Have you heard? In Harlem, New York. Oh, yes, yes, I love it. They're supporting President Trump. And you know, just imagine how the government state media is looking at all of this. Just think about how the government state media is like, oh my goodness, how are all these black people in Harlem supporting President Trump? What you don't realize is that black people, millions of black people that look like me and that don't look like me, we are supporting President Trump. And of course, you're gonna have some black people out there that can't get off that Democrat plantation because they don't know any better. They can't help themselves because they've been taught to hate President Trump and hate America. You're gonna have them. But for the rest of us that love freedom, wanna be able to take care of our families, wanna have everything, the American dream, bleed that. We support Trump. Get over it. Uh, that's a big part of the message that you saw yesterday. And then there's another part that was voiced by Stephen A. Smith, ESPN, with his podcast on YouTube, The Stephen A. Smith Show. And it has to do with the reality of this court case. Here, here's the thing. All we're hearing from the media, from late night comedians, from the pop culture, from academia, from the music industry, from the news media and journalists and Democrats, all the way across the board. All you hear is how awful Trump is how he's evil, how he's a fascist, how he's going to ruin the country, he's going to put, but here's the thing. He's actually leading in the polls. If we had the election today, he'd win going away right now. On the national poll, as well as on the uh, on the national popular vote, I should say, as well as on the state-by-state -state electoral college vote. So how is that possible? How is it possible? You see, if Donald Trump is so bad and so awful, and he was such a terrible president, and Joe Biden is so great, if you're a Democrat, aren't you chomping at the bit to have the election? Don't you? I mean, you you should be like, this is great. We're running against Trump. He's the worst. He's terrible. Nobody likes him. So why are they trying to put him in jail? Why are they trying to keep him off the ballot? Why are they trying to do whatever they can to keep him from making it to election day? Why are they trying to keep you from voting? If they're so confident and they know that he's so awful, you would think that they'd be like, let's have the election right now. We can't wait for the American people to have their voice heard, right? And yet they're not. And that's where Stephen A. Smith comes in because he sees it. He knows it. This is the reality. To my liberal friends out there, all you're doing is showing that you're scared you can't beat them on the issues and the merits. That's why he keeps saying it's a political campaign against me. That's why he keeps saying they can't beat me at the election, at the polls. This is the only way they could do it. And if you don't put him in jail and he still goes from being a presumptive GOP nominee to the official GOP nominee and he goes to the polls, even though he was going to whine about winning and being being rigged again, you have given more fodder to that argument which means we'll never have peace in this country because tens of millions of people see what extent the other side is willing to go through just to keep him out of office because they can't beat him on their own merits and they're gonna say hey you trump this up against them again and we'll have no peace when all you got to do is figure out a way to beat them on the issues. But you haven't been able to do it. 100%. 100%. You've got the better ideas. You've got the better policies. You've got the better candidates with the better temperament and the more likability and the, the less offensive tweets and all the things that you say. You got all that going for you? then man up, get to the election day, and win the freaking election. Everything else you're doing, all the other noise, all the other chaos that you are purposely sowing in this country and in, and in our lives, all it tells us is you're terrified because you know you can't win. 100% right.